Okay, guys, we're on chapter 10.2, so you should have those notes and that homework set in front of you. This is just a little um, activity that hopefully you guys are able to do in class. But if I was to fill a cup of water up so that the water level is right at the top, I can't put another drop of water in, and I slowly add a penny to, to the water, <clears throat> to the cup, without splashing if possible... How many pennies do you think I could add before it ran over? Just jot down a number. Now, hopefully you guys can do this in class, but if, um, if so, push pause now. If not, I'll tell you what happened when we did this last year. Last year when we did this, we found <coughs> that... In my cup that was full to the top with water, I was able to add, depending on how quickly I did it, I was able to add up to 68 pennies. I was able to add a ton of pennies before it bubbled over. And it gave me kind of this look where the molecules of water held together at the top instead of pouring over the side. So, when you think about that, what in the world made that water stick together to where it would not flow over? That's intermolecular forces, which you're about to learn about. Chapter 10.2, we are on intermolecular forces. Um, these are forces between molecules. So if I'm talking about a sample of say, hydrogen gas, I'm talking about the forces between each of the molecules of hydrogen, okay? So, um, a couple of things you want to keep in mind. Intermolecular forces are the attractive forces between molecules. What holds the molecules, the substance, together? Now, this only becomes significant when the particles are close together. This does not apply very much to the gases we just looked at last section because the particles are so far apart. Now, these forces that kind of stick the molecules together, like water molecules, influence properties such as boiling point because the stronger they're held together, the more energy you have to add to break these forces that hold each molecule to the one next to it. All right, one good thing to keep in mind is intermolecular forces, though there are some strong ones and some weak ones, they are weaker than the bonds that hold a single molecule together, being ionic or covalent bonds. The first type we're going to talk about are dipole-dipole forces. This is what exists between polar molecules, such as H2O. We've already talked about what makes something polar, and that's when polar bonds are asymmetrically arranged. So we're talking about either a bent or a trigonal planar shape, for those of you in honors. And this is where I get a positive and negative region of my molecule. So if I have H2O, I have my oxygen up top and my hydrogens on the bottom. This is generally how it's drawn in a bent shape. And we get a positive buildup at the bottom because that's where my less electronegative atom is and my more electronegative is up top and these arrange themselves in such a way that the negatives line up and kind of stick to the positives of the next molecule and the positives attract the negatives of the molecule next to them but we call these dipoles <clears throat> and that negative region in one polar molecule attracts the positive in the next one now that holds this substance together, so that holds water together, and it's called the dipole-dipole force. Here's a good visual for you. Um, this one right here might be something like HCl, or HF would be the better one, where the fluorine end is the yellow end, and the H's are the positive ends. And you can see that there's a bunch of hyd uh, hydrofluoric acid or hydrogen fluoride here, and they're held together. Each molecule is held together by that partial positive and negative on each molecule. Okay, 
Hydrogen bonding is the strongest of all the intermolecular forces. So you need to keep that in mind. All of these are going to have your highest boiling points. Mom, I'm a little bit... Now, this is um, obviously going to have to do with hydrogen. And it only occurs, let's say, in a molecule that has a hydrogen attached covalently to a very electronegative atom. So, here's your hint. It's going to be nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine with hydrogens in it. Okay? So, it's got to be H plus either nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine in the molecule. <clears throat> and the way this works is kind of like the dipole-dipole we just looked at. And these three are going to be your very negative ends, and these are going to be your positive ends. So, um, when you see these in structures, they're going to show you a dotted line, okay? I'll show you a picture of that in the next one. This is what hydrogen bonding looks like. So, hydrogen bonding, um, my example here is water. As you noticed, it, it's basically a dipole-dipole force that's much stronger because of the hydrogen, since hydrogen is very low in electronegativity. So um, this is always your strongest, and most of these have very high boiling points. London dispersion forces are our weakest of the three that we're going to look at. Now, even noble gas atoms, so helium, neon, any of those, plus nonpolar molecules have slight attraction for each other. In any atom or whatever, those electrons are continually moving. We talked about that before. So what happens is occasionally an electron distribution might be uneven. And when that happens, you get a temporary or a momentary positive pole and negative pole. So these are like what we call induced dipoles. And it just happens in a split second. And in another second, they're gone. But it does hold the molecules together very, very loosely. Here's a picture of it. If you notice this molecule right here, has the electrons on the left side and they're going to be continually moving. At some point, at some point, it will look like this molecule in the middle where the positives or all of the electrons line up on the left and the right side becomes very positive. Now when that happens, the very instant that happens, the atom next to it shifts its electrons because they're attracted to that positive side. And it'll keep going with the atom next to this, and the one here, and the one around, and it just happens to every molecule within the sample. <clears throat> the thing is, it's only for a second, a split second actually, and then everything kind of just shifts around again, because those electrons don't stop moving. Now, this temporary dipole then induces a dipole in an adjacent atom, and they're held together by a weak attraction. Now, these are called London dispersion forces. And here's the kicker. If you have London dispersion forces, it's going to increase with molar mass. So if you look down here, um, look at helium. Molar mass of just four, okay? Its boiling point is very low, 4.6 Kelvin. But if I increase my molar mass, look at my boiling point. It continues to increase. Because there are more electrons to shift from one side of the atom to another, therefore it will hold it together a little bit better. Now, um, you need to be able to kind of look at the atoms present and see if you can figure out which one, which one of these three that we talked about it would have. So you need to be able to tell by its composition and structure if it's dipole-dipole, a London force, or hydrogen bonding.
Here's a big one. London dispersion forces are in all substances because all substances have electrons that can shift from one side to another. Just keep in mind that when it comes down to London dispersion forces, your heavier molecules are going to have, uh, have stronger London forces. Your dipole-dipole forces and hydrogen bonding can also add up, and the hydrogen bonding is the highest. All right, so if they're, um, we're going to practice one on the next page. Here's an example of what would you would be asked, and you want to determine which of these, out of A and B, which of those two have the higher boiling point. <clears throat> well, if you look at the top one, CH4 is tetrahedral, which don't stress dramatically over that one. But that's not going to be polar at all, nor is CCL4 because of the shape. Neither of these are going to have hydrogen bonding because carbon is not a very electronegative atom. It's not nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine. So we're going to go based on molar mass here. CH4 is going to be 12 plus 4, so that's roughly 16 grams per mole. Whereas CCL4 is going to be 12 plus whatever 35 times 4 is. So that's 20. That's 12. That's 140 plus 12. So 152 grams per mole. Meaning CCL4 is going to be held together better. Because of the London forces. Okay. For part B. Which of these two are going to be held together better? Um, again, we have uh, we could have dipole-dipole forces here because of the shape. These are going to be trigonal planar. Okay, trigonal planar. They'll look something like this. And if you notice, though, what is the hydrogen connected to? The one on the left is going to have hydrogen bonding because it's nitrogen with hydrogen. So it's going to have a much higher boiling point because it has that partial positive, partial negative end, which is like a really strong dipole-dipole force. All right, guys. You need to work on homework set 10-2. Do your best. Check the calendar to see which homework set or which part of the homework set you are assigned.